Ready, set, go. Of course we're listening to the new Hosier EP. Did you think, you didn't, did you not think that we were going to do this? Did you not think that we were going to do this as soon as I was able? Like, what, what do you think of me? Do you think me a fool? Nay? Yay? We're doing it. We're right here. We're doing it, okay? Unheard EP by Hosier. Obviously, we're here. We're doing this. You know? All right? Great. Glad we're on the same page. I was very excited uh, when I found out that this was released. I always am fascinated when an artist releases an album and then releases like a little extra EP of like songs that got cut uh, from said album. Because on one hand, it's hosier. These are gonna be bangers. The man doesn't miss. But I do also think that it is worth considering and talking about why these songs might have gotten cut from the album. You know, just because they're good songs doesn't mean uh, that they should have been on the original album. I'm sure, I'm sure Andrew, our boy, has his reasons, as he says. Uh, he, literally when he released the EP, he said, uh, these are songs that might have made it to the circles of gluttony, limbo, violence, and the outward ascent, uh, respectively, but could not for different reasons. Poser's got his own uh, sort of rationale for why these songs didn't fit onto Unreal on Earth. Um, but clearly, he thought they were worth sharing sort of in their own context as sort of uh, deleted scenes of a kind. Uh, they wanted to re release them as their own little EP. And I think we can all say, thank you, Mr. Byrne, for uh, re releasing these songs. Unheard. We got four songs. We're, we're, we're in and out today. We're in and out today. Uh, it's going to be a quick one. Four songs. Like 14 minutes of content. Uh, we got... We're starting off with the one that everyone has heard. And I have been entirely unable to avoid hearing. Uh, I have not heard this song in its entirety. Obviously, as someone that is on tiktok if you want to follow me on tiktok you can do that over at tall guy 96 as someone that that is on tiktok it has been physically impossible for me to avoid hearing this song i try to avoid hearing anything from an album that i know that i'm gonna be covering on the channel um, but sometimes sometimes you just get your own version of whamageddon and uh, nothing much to be done about that. So we're gonna get started right away with Too Sweet. This is the song that, that it, it's been on the radio. Let's, let's, let's get freaking started here, boys. Oh. See? I'm so glad that I'm doing this because this is such a fascinating, like, context, or just a fascinating opening choice to have. I don't know that I would have expected to just hear that, that bass riff right away. I don't think I recognize that even from the chorus. Maybe they have it playing in the chorus. I haven't been listening for it, but now I will be. Ooh. Here we go, boys. Oh. 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 Oh.
Oh, we're dropping out for the first chorus. I'm so glad that I... See, I haven't heard this chorus. I haven't heard this chorus. This is great. I love hearing this version with the, like, it's literally just the bass, hosier, and the clapping, which might also be hosier, just in the studio clapping along. I wouldn't be surprised in the least bit if that's just him having a nice clapping day. Set aside one specific entire recording day just for the clapping. I don't know, he's a professional. Maybe that's how he do and does things. Okay. Oh. Oh, that's a little bit. That's a little bit more crispy. That's a little bit deep fried there. Okay. Do you now? This is so. This is a strutting song. I do not. Oh, he's bringing it close. Oh. I'm a freaking sucker for that that little falsetto note that he hits the like take my whiskey need the little e he didn't have to go up that up that extra note he could have just kept it straight there but he wanted to throw a little a little seasoning on it throw a little pepper on that shit We're letting it out now. Playing around with the rhythm here. Okay. Okay, we're just doing... Oh. There's, there's something else percussion wise happening on this side it's maybe it's just like maybe it's just like 16th note clapping but it's there's something extra that's going on here that sounds a little clappy but a little bit more on the slappy side it's like clappy slappy if that makes sense I'm getting a little clappy slappy with it Okay. That was too sweet. I would say it's it was just sweet enough. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay, so before getting into the about section, which there is definitely there's a lengthy one, to try maybe try and hypothesize why this one might have gotten cut from Unreal on Earth. I'm assuming this is one that would have yeah, this one would have gone into the circle of gluttony alongside of so this it's interesting that the two <laughs> the two songs that like got pretty big from this album were both from the circle of gluttony so you got this one and then you've got you you're young that's so fascinating that though both of the songs from Cir from the circle of gluttony were the ones that really rang out uh, amongst the masses. I don't know if that says anything about us, uh, or if it just means that Hosier knows how to make, us, make a sexy banger when he's talking about gluttony, which I guess there is that sort of, like, hedonistic like, appeal to it, maybe, that he kind of ends up 
that we can end up tapping in to that is not necessarily in, in, uh, not necessarily intended, uh, but somehow gets communicated. Um, but in the about section, um, they say. Uh, Hosier draws a contrast between two individuals with different lifestyles and preferences. One who enjoys life, uh, living life at his own pace, indulging in simple pleasures like whiskey, coffee, and late nights, while not worrying too much about conforming to societal norms of waking up early and living a disciplined life. And the second individual, presumably the partner, doesn't necessarily have to be, Cats having a. Hang on. The cats are fighting. Fucking running a madhouse in here. Okay. Uh, second individual, presumably the partner, portrayed as someone who values discipline, health, and structure. Uh, they encourage the narrator to live a healthier lifestyle, waking up early and taking care of themselves. And then also goes on to say, born from the third circle of hell, gluttony, same as eat your young, Hosier examines excessiveness and overindulgence. Similar to Dante's depiction of gluttony, where it not only refers to overconsumption of food and drink, but also the overindulgence in any worldly pleasure to the detriment of spiritual growth. Which I do think is kind of the interesting and important sort of lesson to draw out from the whole like thing of gluttony being one of these circles of hell is that it's not a necessarily about eating a lot if you get hungry a lot and you're not eating more than you need you're not being a glutton you just have a big appetite right the line is it when you are eating more than your share right eating more than you need or consuming more than is good for you and sort of giving yourself over to that and spending more time in indulgences and pleasure when that time could be spent working on yourself and if if one ends up taking massive priority over the other then you've got a problem because you're not necessarily developing as a person you're just too busy living it up living in the moment as they say uh so let's take a look at these lyrics i will note i do notice like structure wise this is similar to eat your young in that it's pretty pretty standard song structure so i wonder if that was one of the reasons that it got cut is that in the circle of gluttony you've got two songs that have very very like straightforward song structures to the point where you might even like get the two mixed up you know eat your young and too sweet are not necessarily uh about the same things but because they're both touching on relatively like adjacent con content matter and they both have that sort of like groovy bass forward um sort of sound to them it sort of starts to like one or the, one of the two may feel a little bit redundant to have uh, in the album. So let's take a look at the lyrics. Verse one, it can't be said I'm an early bird. It's 10 o'clock before I say a word. Baby, I can never tell. How do you sleep so well? You keep telling me to live right, go, to go to bed before the daylight. But then you wake up for the sunrise. You know, you don't got to pretend baby now and then. And then the pre-chorus, don't you just want to wake up, dark as a lake, smelling like a bonfire, lost in a haze. If you're drunk on life, babe, I think it's great. But while in this world, going into the chorus, I think I will take my whiskey neat, my coffee black, and my bed at three. You're too sweet for me. Uh, and then it repeats that. So you do have this sort of like dichotomy of these two personalities uh, that do seem to be in some sort of a romantic uh, relationship. And they're sort of commenting on the other's uh, sort of lifestyles where one is saying to the other, 
don't you ever want to like give yourself a little extra time in the day i know it's nice to sleep in but sometimes you just want to like go to bed early because it's good for you or maybe you want to like just take your coffee black you know you don't have to do anything fancy find pleasure in the simple things whereas the other person says things like in um oh interesting here's a here's an interesting line that yeah i remember laughing at this you treat your mouth as if it's heaven's gate the rest of you like you're the tsa right so you're treating you know your your senses you're sparing no expense but the rest of you as a person uh is feeling a little a little lackluster maybe a little malnourished perhaps and then they they kind of give that like sort of reassurance of don't get me wrong wrong you know you're bright as the morning as soft as the rain pretty as a vine as sweet as a grape if you can sit in a barrel maybe i'll wait uh until that day so like they see the appeal they each person sees the appeal of the other but they're just sort of you know they have their nature to them and they know what they will tend to gravitate towards um but it's a it's a cool sort of uh, character study on both ends uh, that you can kind of study within this song. It doesn't necessarily have to have a resolution to it. It's more about the dialogue between the two characters and the ideas that you can bring out from that. I knew I knew as soon as I was getting back into Hosier that I was going to spend so much time piece like dissecting every song. Uh, and I'm doing that and I'm not going to stop doing that. But I do need to stop at a certain point get moving through this album so that we don't have a two-hour video about four songs i don't want to do that don't want to do that let's keep moving to track number two wildflower and barley uh featuring allison russell not familiar with allison's work but let's see how they sound together Starting with some bird song. We're out. Oh. Oh, this is an intimate space. Oh. I like this. Okay. Springtime in the country. It's, oh, tell me about it. Tell me about springtime in the country. Each time I'm shocked by the light. Uh huh. The world lying fallow. Are apart from me. Okay. Everything in my vision is movement and light. Nice. A bowl, barrel, wildflower and barley. Oh. Oh. Keys. Oh. Okay. Tickle in the keys over here. Also, hello, Allison. Great to have you. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh. Oh. Okay. I can't tell what I'm supposed to be feeling right now. Because up until this point, it was very, like, calm and peaceful and pastoral. But now the there's something about the, like, chords that are being used where I feel, like, kind of uneasy. Maybe I'm almost certain that that's on purpose. I just don't, I just don't know what kind of uneasy, like, what I'm supposed to be uneasy about. Which kind of contributes to the uneasiness or the unease. Uh, but let's, let's... Let's find out. We're only now in the first chorus, so let's give these guys some time to speak for themselves. <laughs> Interesting. That melody sounds familiar. They use that melody in a different song in, on Unreal Unearth. 
What is that? What is that melody from? Is that from, I think that's from Unknown Nth. Or no, not Unknown. Uh, uh, what was it? Psycho Pomp, I think is what it was. Psycho Pomp. Yeah. The one, the one that's about the dead animals on the road. I think I the the we've definitely heard that before, and it's interesting that he's using it, using it again. Maybe that's one of the reasons for why this didn't end up on the album. It's because he didn't wasn't able to justify bringing that back in. They said the thing. They, they said the words that they had on for the with the album for the title that they had the words. Those were the words that they had that they used for the album. Those were the ones. Mm. We're back to springtime. Another month has not much longer now. The sun hesitates more oh. on each evening's darkening. These guys Dolphins sound great together. Remain above ground. Like grief and sweet memory. Well flower and barley. Wow. And they and then we return to the bird song. Very cool. Okay, that was interesting. There's there was a lot going on there. Those are some that's that's some hefty text right there. Okay. Let's see here. In Wildflower and Barley, Hosier conveys a sense of longing and sings about the desire for renewal. The track portrays first circle of hell from Divine Comedy, uh, where virtuous pagans and unbaptized in infants reside. Uh, the track was written back in 2020 during the COVID-19 pandemic. Ah, so we got another we got another pandemic track. Uh, Hoser mentioned in an interview that this song is uh, referencing the stillness and the sort of eerie, unhappy quiet of living in the countryside or living in the city, seeing empty streets, seeing empty roads. But I kind of wrote a playful song around that. That's what I was locking on to. That was that's what I was locking on to. That was that was the unease that I was locking on to because it was very peaceful at the start, but then when you come into the into the the chord progression for that chorus, it does there is this weird like eerie unhappy piece to it. So I guess that was referring to sort of the like extra level of emptiness that we were that was present very much during 2020 and 2021 that's very interesting that he went to that he was able to sort of express that in that way i love that okay he also said during the youtube premium party video for the selby part two described this song as a kind of love song but also at a time when everybody was stationary and static and useless in a time of such crisis. The song is also trying to recognize the usefulness of dirt, the usefulness of soil in that which facilitates the growth of something that cannot die, of something perpetual, will always come back, will always grow. That facilitates the renewing of a new generation, facilitates the renewing of a new world, that facilitates creation. Uh, also referencing the lyrics from first time fighting off like all creation the absence of itself right right very very interesting okay so that's that's kind of the the uneasiness of it the restlessness of it is like sitting in this like unnatural almost like almost unnatural like quietness and peace and feeling useless because you're not doing anything yourself and you're just kind of sitting waiting for things to be restored again 
um that's very very a fascinating sort of sangha come out of that that time let's take a look at that so verse one we're, we got that bird song flying in <clears throat> springtime in the country each time I'm shocked by the light uh, the world lying fallow and you are and you are apart from me fallow referring to like ready to be harvested or ready to be seeded I would rather say uh, everything in my vision is movement and life riverboat wheelbarrow wildflower and barley uh, springtime in the country I can smell summer on its breath Low and harrowed lie f the fields and the heart of me. Everything in my vision, departure and death, river, boat, wheelbarrow, wildflower, and barley. So we're seeing two different perspectives on the same thing. We've got Hosier's perspective, which is the world is settled, but it's waiting for its potential to be unlocked from this new thing that will be brought uh, forward after this pause and then we have i guess allison's perspective on this or i guess sort of the alternate alternate perspective on it which is you're waiting for something you can smell summer on on the wind um but everything that you see right now is just things leaving and dying right you see you just see things ending and you're not seeing the beginning of it so you're using the same four things, riverboat, wheelbarrow, wildflower, and barley, and you're seeing two different sides to the same data. And then the chorus is uh, Allison singing the healers. This year, I swear it will be buried in actions. And then, and then Allison goes, our healing. And then Hosier says, I, this year, I swear it will be buried in words. Then the diggers are digging the earth. Then some close to the surface, some close to the casket. I feel useful as dirt. Put my body to work. And it's interesting to have that, those lines be using the melody from Cycle Pomp because that's also relating to dead matter, right? They're not only useful as dirt, but like useful as like decaying flesh, both of which can be used to feed new things that are growing right you're putting your dead this thing that feels dead and useless to work by allowing it to facilitate growth of new things which is also then you know in, an, in a later chorus they then use the line the line i feel as useful as dirt unreal unearth because unearth is usually used as a verb like to unearth something but it's also here being used as a noun like unearth that is unreal there's a weird there's a weird double side to that but i guess you are unearthing something you are unearthing whatever new thing is going to come about that is not yet real it's unreal but it's going to be unearthed uh so it's an interesting like phrasing to kind of bring those ideas about, but I like I like it. Very very cool. I love that sentiment and how empathetically it's communicated. You know, like he's not saying that like oh things aren't don't actually feel feel dead actually things are growing and new you like you're you just need to change your perspective on it he sees both perspectives on it he sees the fact that like things feel restless and uneasy and the the silence to it feels the silence and like lack of movement feels uh uncomfortable um but he's also seeing the same thing and putting a different spin on it so while yes it helps to have a to offer a different perspective on it. He's acknowledging the immediately available perspective that a lot of us had during lockdown. So very, very cool. Big fan. As to why he would cut this. Um maybe maybe he wanted some of the 
message of this song to be more implicit just to end the album as a whole. You know, you don't always want to say the quiet part out loud, right? You've got that sort of restoration uh, kind of idea uh, in first light and sort of being cultivated all throughout the album. And so maybe to have uh, this song that is more explicitly communicating that, maybe you didn't feel like that was uh, like that was necessary. Maybe. It's a theory. Let's keep going to track number three, Empire Now, which last I checked is going to be in the Circle of Violence. The other song that I remember being from the Circle of Violence was um, Butchered Tongue, which was one of my favorite songs from that album. So I'm curious to see what other take on violence uh, Hosier has for us. Oh, 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 we're getting, oh, this is, this is like blues, this is a different kind of blues boat. Oh, oh we're getting cinematic. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Alright, bud. Okay. Oh. Tell me about it. Oh, that's... Jeez. Okay. Oh! What the hell? So, obviously, this this EP has been out for a little over a week, at least, maybe a couple weeks at this point, from from recording this at least. Uh, and so, one of my friends, I was that has heard it. I was talking to about it, and they knew that I was going to be making this video about it. So they knew to be relatively uh, vague as to not spoil anything. One of the key things that they communicated was, uh, in their exact words, uh, he makes some moves, which I knew, like, basically, that he makes some, like, bold choices that you don't necessarily expect. Uh, and I think this, these are some of those moves. Jeez. This is immediately my favorite song so far on the CP. And if it had ended up on Unreal on Earth, this would probably be one of my favorite songs on the album. I am such a sucker for that, like, really hard, stomp, clappy, like, kind of rhythm. Oh, it's so good. And he's weird, pulling out some weird, like, electronic elements in the, in the production, too. That is, like, the song has such a distinct like texture and like feel to it i'm really i'm immediately into also those freaking lyrics or the the vocals just coming straight out of the top well not straight out of the top but like halfway in that second go through that chorus he just lets loose and i appreciate him so much for that thank you so much hosier Okay. Spinning cause the earth to shift. Mm -hmm. Problem brought its own solution. A power now the world we've made. Fast. After all, yeah. I wouldn't say the world. For I go to start it. There's a little bit of like 
not quite distortion. It might be a little bit of distortion, but there's a little bit of like electricity to the like lead up to those hits. There's sort of the like yeah, is the best way I can communicate it. Kind of the lead up to that. Like I wish I could do that with just a regular drum kit. Um, I wish there were a way to do that, but there's not. So, you know, we'll, f we'll figure it out until then. And I'll just listen to this song and enjoy it. I, th I guess that's what I'll do. <laughs> oh. Ooh, what was that? Okay. And then we drop out for the chorus. Oh my gosh. I was I I was not sitting comfortably enough to be ready for that song. But holy cow that slapped in the de by the definition of the word. Well, uh, according to the about uh Empire Now is a reflection on the fact that it's been 100 years since Ireland took its first step toward independence from the UK and the British Empire. Uh, it's also a song about how the past informs the present and future. I was getting that. I was picking up on that. Um, and I do think it's cool that both of the both of the songs placed in the circle of violence have to do with sort of uh, the the effect of the legacy and effect of colonialism on on Ireland. It's a nice uh, sort of two part. I guess it would have been a two part story to tell. I find it interesting that this got cut and he kept butchered tongue for the same reason or a similar reason that wildflower and barley got cut because I. I think that this song is a bit more explicit about things uh, than perhaps Butcher Tongue. Well, I don't know. Butcher Tongue lays out some of the same themes as well. Like both songs have this have this theme of like the the history of of Ireland being informed into the present you know with butchered tongue it's more focusing on like the language and how hosier sees himself as this sort of uh continuing survival of irish culture and the irish uh language um whereas in this case it's much more of a like sort of grander like social political uh scale of you got in the chorus sun coming up on a dream come around 100 years from the empire now sun coming up on, on a world that's easy now so it's it's more kind of this song is more getting into the scale uh of this historical process of sort of ireland being able to detach itself um from its relationship with uh with britain and the uk uh, speaking of which, if you want to watch a movie that also gets into this shit, uh, you should watch Banshees of Inishirin, if you haven't already. It's a really, it's a really cool movie that also kind of gets into this in a much more smaller scale uh, manner, but the parallels are there as well. One particular verse that I wanted to look at was the, I guess, second... Actually, this is the only this is the only part of the song that's considered a verse, so I guess it's the first verse, uh, which says, "The martyrs of our revolution, their spinning caused the earth to shake. The problem brought its own solution. They power now the world we've made." 
um, which is a very, very important sentiment to communicate, I think, that the way that the reason that we have so many of the things that sort of help our quality of life are there because people had to stand up for them and people had to protest and demand um, these aspects of quality of life. That's like minimum wage are only there because someone like made a stand and and like forced and like made sure that uh, society became a little bit more suitable for human life. Uh, and the fact that it takes a fight and the fact that we have martyrs from efforts like that uh, is unfortunate and outrageous and makes me very frustrated. Um, but that's just kind of the case. And it is important to know that the martyrs of those revolutions uh, did make an effect, did like make an impact and their decisions are a big reason for why the world looks uh, the way it does. That's all I'll say about that one. Freaking loved that song. I'm going to be listening to, to that one so much from here on out. Okay, and track number four out of four, titled Farewell. Is this meant to be a final track? Was this supposed to go after First Light? I know that this would have gone on to the later end of the album. I just don't know if it was the, if it's supposed to be the final song. Let's uh, see what it's like either way. Okay. Okay. Jesus Christ, that's a that's an image. Oh, okay. Oh, those are some nice chords. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh no. Right, yes, that kind of farewell. Right. Oh wow. Oh! Oh, we're bouncing. I heard that that I know in the in the harmonies. Oh, this is lovely. Obviously it's sad, but I drop out. gosh that was delightful that's the that was the most like fun bouncy sad song i've ever heard because <laughs> don't think andrew don't think you didn't sneak those depressing lyrics under all that delightful guitar strumming and plucking and the 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 bouncy forward moving percussion jeez that was so lovely. And I think I got an idea of kind of what 
what this was uh, trying to get at. The percussion reminded me a lot of anything but, as well as the sort of decept de deceptive sort of like upbeat, very cheerful like instrumentation of everything. Um, but the fact that, you know, you have that joyful and, and like playful instrumentation, but the lyrics are communicating something else. Um, but I feel like this is a little bit more earnest than anything but, because anything but was literally about deceit um, and contradiction. And there's a little bit of that in here, just because Hosier likes to write these sort of weird contradictory dichotomies into his lyrics in order to kind of communicate a more complicated idea. Verse 1, which is, I wouldn't fare well, and I couldn't fare well. Hedgehog under a van wheel kind of wouldn't fare well, out here trying to feel good again. And I wouldn't fare well, a kitten cozy in the engine type of wouldn't fare well, a dog deep into the chocolate kind of wouldn't fare well. If you're wearing a wear, don't feed a dog chocolate. It's poisonous to them. You'll kill your dog if you give him a lot of chocolate. Um, and then the chorus is, I'll take any high, any glazing of the eyes, any solitary pleasure that was sorrow in disguise. Let the sun only shine on me through a fallen sky. I'll be all right. Any solitary pleasure that was sorrow in disguise. That line, I see that line. I, like, I connect with that. I'm the kind of person that when I'm having like a really, really bad day, like a particularly bad like mental health day, um, if I know that I you know, have a lot of work to do and I'm just not feeling productive or I'm just in my head or I'm spiraling, instead of doing things that would actually make me feel better like maybe going outside or eating a healthy meal um i'll just sit and watch uh youtube and eat snacks you know and i won't it won't make me feel better but it'll sort of help me zone out right it'll gl it, it it's the glazing of the eyes right where it's it's not that i don't feel better it's that i can let myself be a little bit less aware of how bad I still feel, if that makes sense. Um, so I definitely get that. I'm curious about this whale swimming up the Sumitagawa. What is that? What's that referring to? The Sumitagawa, or the Sumida River, is a famous river that flows through Tokyo. The image of a whale swimming up the Sumida River is highly unlikely and implies a situation that goes against the natural order or is extremely challenging. Whales are ocean creatures and navigating a river, especially one like the Sumida River, with its narrow and shallow characteristics, would be impossible for them. Okay, so this is just me not being familiar with the fact that the Sumida Gawa is a particularly narrow and shallow river, and a whale trying to swim up that uh, would not fare well. Which, don't think I didn't notice the wordplay that he's doing with farewell because in because the title is it's two words farewell but also he's you know farewell is what you say when you're saying goodbye to someone farewell refers to handling something well or going through something well so maybe this is this is kind of a refer referring to the idea of like this is referring to the sort of outward ascent and maybe this outward ascent is not going as smoothly as the narrator might expect maybe they're just not faring well maybe it's a maybe it's a maybe they're feeling more like a hedgehog under a van kind of kind of kind of feeling and then the post chorus is uh joy disaster come out come out eh, come unbound here i'll deny deny me none while i'm allowed with all things above the ground so maybe that is his thing of like just allowing himself to indulge himself a little bit while he's on his up upward trajectory 
you know? He's not worried about sorting out the joy from the disaster. He's a lot he was allowing himself to take both at the same time. And so much of like the the conclusion to all of the verses here are I'm just out here trying to feel good again. And maybe he's going about that in a bit of a messier fashion. Which I can I can appreciate that. The line let the sun only shine on me through a fallen sky is also a uh, maybe a reference to Icarus, you know, going back to I Icarian, where he's only able to appreciate the beauty during his downfall, right? Or I guess upfall of the sky is falling. That's that whole thing. Go go listen to Icarian and figure out what that's all about. Maybe, but that seems to be a callback to that, which is also really interesting to kind of have that little like reference um this late in the album very very cool so much to unpack here but that's <laughs> that's freaking hosier for you and that's that's unheard not so unheard now i've heard it so uh might want to get on changing that ep title there buddy boo gotta gotta make it heard now that's just what it's called now the herd ep that was lovely. I didn't expect it to, like, be that banger heavy. Like, too, too sweet. I think I understand why that one got cut. I think that it, feels, it felt a little bit too generic of a song to really um, make it on alongside Eat Your Young, which is also a little bit more of a generic pop song. But, like... Empire Now and Farewell. Who boy, if I had heard those over the course of Unreal Unearth, uh, that would have been lovely. And I'm curious as to what his um, decision process would have been in uh, his choice to uh, cut those from the album. Um, but again, very, very glad that he decided uh to release them on this uh afterward i feel i'm sure we all feel very blessed by this so yeah that will be it thank you so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed this if you've got your own thoughts on these songs uh if you've got your own theories about why these songs might not have made it onto unreal on earth i would love to hear them uh in the comments if there are other albums you would like to see me react to let me know i've got a queue there's a lot of big albums coming out over the next spring or, or over this spring um so i'll get to them as soon as i can if you have not subscribed now's a good time to do that if you would like uh you can ring the bell if you want to do that if you want to support the channel in a monetary fashion uh, you can do that through my fourth wall site. Uh, you can buy merch. You can become a member, with, which also gives you discounts on merch and also gets you a shout out at the end of these videos. Um, gets you access to some exclusive album reactions that I've done where I upload them to YouTube and then the copyright system says no, no, no. Uh, so those will all be on the exclusive member feed and I'll be putting up much more and more stuff up there uh, as that gets more and more traction so if you want to do that would highly appreciate it uh, until next time thank you so much and i'll see you later